Hey and welcome guys to another video and I really really appreciate all the comments and the reactions on the last video. Thank you very very much. We are on the way to uh, my carbon fiber supplier. Yes, it's finally time for some carbon fiber uh, and we're gonna go to carpix.se. Uh, we're gonna pick up some supplies there and of course some rolls of carbon fiber. So it's finally time for some carbon fiber. Fiber. And guys, as usual, it's always a blast to be at uh, carbix.se. Uh, <laughs> I love carbon fiber and I know many of you do too. But what I'm gonna do now is actually prepare the trunk and the roof on the car. Um, so for you who are new here at the channel, we actually added a duct tail onto the trunk lid. I did it a little bit different than anybody else. I didn't want it to look like everyone's duct tail on a G37. So what we actually did, we actually glued the duct tail onto the trunk. We actually used fiberglass and resin to actually make it really, really stiff on there to the trunk. And what I'm actually doing now is the transitions. So what you can see here, I actually don't like it when it's so sharp. So uh, the ducktails that you often buy to these trunk lids are very, very sharp. And of course, that's maybe nice when you don't gonna add carbon fiber to it. So what I'm actually doing now, I'm building up some rounder edges or radius here. And the benefits of actually making the radius smoother is when I'm gonna lay the carbon fiber weave over the sharp edges that can be a tricky one then we're actually gonna add some black primer and black primer is i often use a black paint or black primer as a base when you lay the carbon fiber weave over something that's too light underneath it can actually shine through on that <laughs> that doesn't look good trust me i've done that when i began with cars doing carbon fiber uh-huh, you have to have a dark color underneath your carbon fiber weave. So, I got parts all over the workshop where to begin. So, I have the doors right there. Two of them with the Tesla door handles. They are coming out sick. I don't have, know if I have shown you, but look at this beauty. They are looking sharp. So, I'm going to actually paint the door handles and the door exactly or the same, <laughs> same color as the car and they are mostly going to disappear i don't want them to actually be there but when you see the detail it's going to be shocking and we have the front bumper the q60 front bumper and we've been sanding our ass off on this one and it's beginning to look really really nice and of course i wanted to have this section left from the q60 i really oh I almost forgot the back bumper guys i have another episode when we actually modified the back bumper we added an amg diffuser that we also did with uh, resin and fiberglass i added these sections to just to light up the uh the back bumper because it's so huge and so big and then we actually moved up the license plate holder here and as I told you, I have a lot to do. So, oh, I'm talking too much, right? Over to actually prepping the trunk and let's do some carbon fiber. So, starting off of cleaning off all the dust from the sanding and uh, waxing grease remover, of course. Always clean your parts before you're actually adding tape or a uh, bondo. So, that's really, really vital. You actually want it to stick <laughs> onto the panel. If you have dust left, uh, you have the possibility that the uh, bottle will actually uh, loosen itself from the panel and uh, then you get cracks and then you got cakes all over your panel and you don't want that. So, wax and grease remover on the whole panel. I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna add Bondo onto this, like make it smooth and uh, of course it's the same procedure on the other side and see you when I'm actually done with this. And the lights are out and you stumble in the dark You kept pushing on but then you went too far When your ship has sailed and all your dreams are lost Everything is wrong, you feel like it's your fault Just remember, I will be there for you baby Remember, there's nothing out there to get you, don't forget it just 
So the primer is actually dried up now. And what I actually recommend, so everything that I actually recommend is only the things that I do in my workshop. I'm not telling you how it's done, it's how I do it. I'm used to sanding with a 240 grit or a 320 grit. I'm just gonna sand off the whole chunk uh, with 320 grit. But the main focus on this uh, panel is actually to have carbon fiber from here so actually to the tip, we're not gonna do it the whole way because I have a pretty cool idea. And um, you actually have to wait and see what that idea is, but it's something special. Um, so half of the trunk is going to be in carbon fiber or if I decide to do um, the whole uh, trunk. So I've actually been in the paint booth and prepping the roof and uh, I would say it's the same procedure as the trunk, but of course I sanded it down with a 320 grid. Uh, made sure that I didn't got any burn through because everything has to be black uh, for the carbon so it don't doesn't look through uh, the twill weave on the carbon fiber and I'm gonna be, give you a big tip always use some kind of acetone or something I'm using uh, wax and grease remover and this is actually the preparations I've done I put uh, like three layers of tape in the edges. I don't want the epoxy to run through. When it actually goes over to a wrong panel, it actually sticks like hell. So this is the preparations. You can see I had to actually add some, a little bit of paint here and then sand it up. Um, uh, also with the 320 grit, I had some burn throughs and now I'm actually gonna prep this. So first of all, I'm actually gonna mix up the epoxy and then I'm actually gonna apply some epoxy onto the um, roof then we're gonna lay the weave over that and then we're gonna add uh, some more epoxy and then it's actually time for the uh, peel pipe so uh, yeah go over to actually mixing the epoxy it's actually time for mixing up the epoxy uh, and uh, Corbix is actually uh, using Nils Mangen, uh, that's actually a company in Sweden, but I guess you can actually buy it worldwide. Uh, so we're gonna use both of these, it's a 35% of a hardener and then it's 100% of this then. And what I actually use, of course I'm gonna mix it, I'm gonna mix it a long long time because you don't want to mix this too poorly and you don't want air bubbles so don't stir it too much I guess and let it sit for a couple of minutes so you can see that the air bubbles actually goes out you don't want to catch some air bubbles in the weave later on in the carbon fiber and I'm usually using these rollers they are kind of fluffy so what I'm gonna do is actually just take the air hose blow them off so I don't get these um, threads in because you can actually see them in the carbon fiber later on so blow them off uh, or if you don't want to have a roller you can of course use a brush if you want to but then you actually have to buy a brush that doesn't doesn't lose the brushes because otherwise that's going to be in the carbon fiber too so i'm just going to mix this up then we're actually going to lay the weave over the roof and uh, hopefully we can film this good but otherwise i'm going to film thoroughly on the trunk later on
actually does love carbon fiber. Put it in the description below because I'm addicted to it. For those who are actually interested if, in what products I actually use, I'm gonna put everything in the description below, of course. I got a 150 centimeters wide of a roll and I'm using a 245 gram uh, thickness. So it's a twill weave. And then I actually use something called pre-plug. So uh, the epoxy that I lay over the uh, carbon fiber weave is gonna slowly uh, sink in. And then you have all the, the, um, the ups and downs. And I wanna equal out that. I wanna have epoxy uh, smooth through the whole surface. So this is the 245 gram carbon fiber weave. So that's actually from the sunroof pocket that we cut out. And that's the roll of carbon fiber. I love carbon fiber. And then we have the pre pack and that looks like this. It's also 150 weave and um, not the thickness, the, the width of it. It's like a sheet, I guess, a plastic sheet. This is actually gonna absorb the epoxy. And I actually think it's better if I show you in the paint booth how I actually done it. So, um, as you saw, I first of all took the roller. I have a rubber spedal and that I actually use on top of the uh, roof and you can actually see it here. So I let it down. Uh, I let it actually um, take up the epoxy. I took the spedal and just um, scratched lightly with light pressure over the whole surface. And now uh, when I let this dry for 24 to 40 hours I would say I can actually just rip this off and I'm gonna have uh, I'm not gonna have the tops and downs that you usually get and That saves it a lot of time and I actually don't have to sand this Afterwards to actually lay my next layer of epoxy So otherwise you always have to sand away the um, wax uh, surface that you get that saves me a lot of sandpaper uh, a lot of hours and I'm gonna have the temperature set about around about 20 degrees in the paint booth over to the trunk So the stuff in the paint pool is actually cured for, I guess, 24 hours. What I actually can do now is actually just rip off the peel ply for, I guess, it to cure a little bit faster and more secure. How it actually looks when I'm actually ripping it off. Build up to the top and uh, this we can actually just lay epoxy on right now. If we want to, it's been curing now for over 40, 48 to 50 hours in the paint booth. Uh, add some more uh, epoxy and then of course we have to sand it, block it. But this came out really, really good. And as you can see, I just turned it up to the edge and uh, I got a surprise for you. It's gonna be sick, clean and nice in the combination of the rest of the idea that I actually have on the car. And you just have to wait and see.